Hi, and welcome to Apes Like Us. I'm sitting in front of the vet clinic at Yayasan IAR Indonesia. I'm just outside of Ketapong in West Kalimantan, Indonesian Borneo. I've come to talk to the director and founder, Dr. Carmeli Iano Sanchez, about the work she's doing in disease ecology, specifically zoonotic diseases and pathogens that affect orangutans. But what's really fascinating is some of that may have implications for apes like us. Dr. Carmeli was kind enough to sit down for a few minutes and explain the work that she and her team are doing behind all of this and the implications that it might have. This is part of that conversation. This time, on apes like us. Orangutans is because they are also great apes and they are so similar to humans. They get to, uh, we can transmit our diseases, they can transmit their diseases to us. And you know, there's a, a lot of uh, cross transmission of diseases. Um, you know, it's, uh, potentially it could be malaria, we haven't found that, but we kind of rule it out. But also, I mean, you know, from um, uh, respiratory infections that they do get every season, pretty much at the same time as all humans, and, you know, either the keepers get sick and the orangutans get sick too, or the other way around. Um, and they also have um, a lot of... Um, problems like diarrhea, enteritis, in the same way as we do, and yeah, and, and, and I'm sure that there is a lot of uh, cross-transmission of diseases already uh, between the orangutans and, and humans, and, and that's why we need to have very strict protocols for visitors that are absolutely not allowed at the center, but also for our own staff, you know, to follow some uh, procedures, uh, health procedures and uh, hygiene and biosecurity protocols. And I think uh, a lot of the research that we are doing at the center is kind of a breakthrough because it's never been done before. And because I think we are finding out a lot of interesting things about malaria in orangutans. And, and perhaps once we know how malaria works in orangutans, we can also find out how or whether Malaria could be a potential risk for wild populations. Uh, but even farther than that, I think what is very interesting is like uh, we are seeing that orangutans have some naturally acquired uh, immunity. Yeah, so some they, 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 they are uh, able to be immune to the disease. Um, and I think this could potentially have applications for uh, human. Um, vaccines and for how we are going to try to um, create immunization programs for humans to combat um, malaria. So I think um, there is a wide range of there is a wide range of applications of this research uh, that is going to be not only important from the, the orangutan perspective and not only important from the conservation point of view but also for humans and for potentially for medicine, human medicine. So that's really, there's a lot there to unpack. Um, so first, where do you feel like you are, what stage are you in this research? So we have been collecting samples from blood samples from orangutans for now over a, f uh, a few years. Uh, we have hundreds of uh, samples. Um, we uh, have been able to do some uh, surveillance of, of, uh, of the parasite for a period of time. We are not only looking at the um, uh, parasite in blood um, on microscopy, and for which we are also obtaining new information about densities of parasites in blood or parasitemia. Uh, but we have also developed protocols for PCR testing in our uh, in-house lab. So now on site, we can not only do all the blood um, work um, on microscopy, but we can also have different techniques uh, mm, to look at the parasite on PCR, uh, conventional PCR and uh, real-time PCR. 
So it's, it's kind of using all the advanced technology that already exists to be applied in the field, in the areas where we really need uh, to apply this uh, technology because we don't have access to uh, fancy labs where we can send our samples. And because uh, this technology is developing so fast, uh, now we have more and more systems that are kind of portable and that are not, you know, that don't occupy too much space. And, um, and yeah, we've been able to develop a really proper lab facility in our center. I mean, that's one of the things that impressed me so much was the fact that, I mean, I, I don't know a sanctuary in the world that has quite the lab facility that you do. And maybe that's because this, was, this whole place was founded by you as a vet, so you have a whole different approach to looking at the health of not only orangutans, but the, the greater health. Well, yeah, um, and I think it's, um, it's the... Because you were talking about the balance. And the, the connection, and, the connection yeah. between the uh, wildlife, um, the humans, the domestic animals, and the environment, because it's all one environment, and how when you break that balance, then, you know, we have... Uh, outbreaks of diseases and, and, and we have, uh, yeah, I mean, things that we are seeing now with a lot of uh, new emerging diseases that are uh, coming up. Uh, one of the reasons is because we are breaking that balance. I will put down below in the show notes, I will put some links to their work, to zoonotic diseases and the ecology of disease in general, so if you want to learn more about that. Anyway, I want to thank Dr. Carmeli and her team for hosting me here this week and all the stuff that they've, they've done for me and taken time aside to help me understand what they're doing. It's been really, really fascinating. I'm Jerry Ellis, and for everyone at Apes Like Us, thanks for watching, and we'll see you next time. Bye-bye.